Good morning, blues. Blues, how do you do? Good morning, blues. Good blues, how do you do? You know why I'm doing all right. Good morning, how are you? Some of you are on the East Coast. Good evening, blues. Blues, how do you do? Good morning, blues. Blues, how do you do? You know, I'm doing all right. Good morning, how are you? Play it. I said he, he believes he's all right. Good evening, how are you? Welcome to jamplay.com. My name is Michael Hawkeye Herman, and it's good to be with you on this webinar series here that we're doing today. And I'm going to be doing lead guitar in this two-hour seminar, and we're going to be pausing for questions. We're going to be using um, some rhythm tracks later on so that hopefully you can see me play along with rhythm and you can play along with the rhythm. And I want to remind folks that are watching that are not subscribers to jamplay.com that there's a... 25% discount on membership this weekend through Monday morning. And all you have to do is you probably see it on the homepage. All you have to do is use the, the coupon code Hawkeye and you'll get a 25% discount. It's really good to be here. And those of you that have taken my lessons, you probably know that I've been with Jamplay for six or seven years, almost from the, from the very beginning. And I've got many, many hours of lessons, more, more than 150 lessons, and there's way many more, many hours in, in the can. I just probably recorded um, 20 hours of lessons just in the last two days that are, will be put up eventually, and, that, and they're on all subjects relating to blues music. And so I encourage you, I can't tell you how, how gratifying it is to me, for me to hear from you folks, comments and questions. The questions are always welcome, and so are the comments. All you have to do is 
when you're on the site, is on under any lesson, there's supplemental material, and there's also a nav bar for comments, and you can leave me a comment if you like something or don't like something or you have a request. Sorry we can't take requests for songs that are not in public domain because it would cost us a fortune. And then there's the Ask a Teacher nav bar where you can ask me a question. And I usually get to the site, even when I'm on, to on tour, every two or three days, if not every day, to answer your question. And if I don't get there right away... One of the jam play admin people, like Chris Lipe or someone like that, will step in and answer the question for answer questions for me. They're, they are also accomplished guitar players, so I encourage you to. Um, re-up if you're a subscriber and remember that there's more than 60 instructors on jam play i don't care what kind of guitar you like and bass as well if you like to play jazz if you like to play bluegrass if you like to play country or folk music finger picking guitar blues guitar there's more than six probably more than five i know in blues there's at least eight instructors and in every genre of music there's multiple instructors, and so you can learn a lot from one, and then when, you get to, when you've gone through their lesson series, you can learn, learn a lot from others. And many people send me messages saying that I've got the, the first 145 lessons that I did, a, a number of people have sent me a messages and comments saying that they've gone through that 145 lesson series multiple times because they pick up more things each time. The other advantage to jam play, and believe me, I wish this would have been around when I was a kid, but... One of the major advantages of jam play is not just this interaction that we're having here, live interaction, but the fact that you have control over the, the speed, the um, s stopping and starting the video makes a huge difference because if we were in a private lesson and I showed you something and you said, okay, I, and I said, do it now, and you did it, and then you said, Hawkeye, would you repeat it? I'll, I repeat it, but then when I see that you've got it in your brain, I won't repeat it anymore because it's the clock is ticking in a live lesson, and you're only there for an hour, and so I don't want to repeat something over and over again. You don't need to pay me to practice, right? But here on jamplay.com, if there's something that you don't get, whether it's three seconds long or whether it's 30 seconds long or a minute long, you can play it over and over and over again until you get it and stop it and start it and so and, and go back so that you can repeat it and, until you get it. And then if you still don't get it, you can click on the Ask a Teacher. And when you ask me a question, the best thing to do is tell me which lesson number it is and also where, minute and second, it is in the lesson. And I will get back to you and, cl and clarify and answer your question. So you want to say, Hawkeye, this was in, in the lesson on Robert Johnson. And it was lesson number 48. I'm just telling you this off the top of my head. I don't think it is lesson 48, but it's lesson number 48. And at two minutes and 33 seconds, you do something that I just can't make it out. And it stops it. And, and you move on at, at two minutes and 45 seconds. And that really helps me isolate where your problem or, your, or where your question is. So what, I, I hope that jam play has made a difference in your guitar playing. All I can tell you is, that it's made a huge difference in my life, and it's really gratifying for me to be able to interact with you guys and, t and be teaching people all over the world. We have a question. Yes, we have a question from Mike. Yeah. And Mike's question is, he's wondering if you're using a heavy, medium, or light gauge pick, and what are your thoughts on the trade-offs between different gauges? Mike, that's a great question, but I use a blue thumb pick because I like to use, uh, even though I might play electric, electric guitar sometimes, and this guitar has a pickup in it, we're using the pickup now. I use a, a nylon thumb pick, not a plastic thumb pick, because it's, it's fairly lightweight. And not only that, but it won't break. Plastic thumb picks are the worst. Okay, not only will they, they break, but it m might take you a year and a half to get used to having this clunky piece of plastic on your, th on your thumb. I use a thumb pick. There's nothing wrong with using a pl flat pick, but I use this thumb pick that's called a blue Herco nylon thumb pick, and I, care, I buy them by the hundreds because I give them away at workshops because I get so many questions about it. So the reason why I use this fairly lightweight th th thumb pick is not only to protect my finger, but because it's nylon, it's totally unbreakable. And I can hold this under, if it's too loose, I can hold it under tap water, warm tap water, and I can squeeze it like that and then hold it under cold water and it will set and it fits and it, and it tightens it up. And if it's too tight, I can hold it under warm water. That's the best thing to do to, to, to soften it a little bit. And then I can open it, stretch it and open it up a little bit and then hold it under the cold water and it, and, and it will set it in that position. So... 
The reason why I play with this pick is are those reasons, but also because in 1970, I went to see Doc Watson twice in one year, and I sat right down front in front of him, and I saw he was using one of these kind of thumb picks, and he plays he played blindingly fast. May I may he rest in peace. And after the um, session, the, the performance I saw, I went back and, and, and asked him about his thumb pick, and he said, put your hand out, and I did, and he dropped one, he was blind, so he, he, he grabbed my hand to see where my hand was, and he dropped one of these into my hand, and he said, try this, I think you'll like it, you'll have to lose it, it'll never break, and I've been using these picks ever since, and I buy them in a bag of a hundred at a time, because when I give guitar workshops, I give them out to people, and that's not necessarily to make you change your playing. Okay, what that's about is people ask me questions about it. So I say, here's one for free. Give it a try. The reason why is because, yes, I can hold it like a flat pick and play lead. But I also have my fingers free so that if I want to finger pick at any time, I can. And then I go and go back to playing with a flat pick. So the advantage for me is I'm also a finger picker and I, want, I like to be able to finger pick in the middle of anything. I might be playing a Chuck Berry song and, the, and, and then finger pick a solo after, after playing, holding it like a flat pick. So I guess what I'm saying, Mike, is I'm really sorry, but I can't answer your question about uh, the gauges of picks. It, you know, the best thing to do is picks are so inexpensive. Uh, to me, anyway, you don't have to buy the most expensive pick. But to find out about gauges, go to the music store and buy. I wouldn't buy a, uh, a, a an extra light pick because it's going to be floppy and, and go back and forth. But you could buy a light, a medium, and a heavy pick. Make sure that they're all three the same brand, exactly the same, because the gauges change from company to the company. So you buy three picks that are that, that might cost you. It might cost you six bucks or something like that for three picks. I'm not sure how much how much the picks are. Depends on what you pick out, and then play with them yourself, and and you decide which one you're most comfortable with. But also use your ears. Your ears are a great judge of the, the sound, and only you can make the uh, the decision about that. So buy three picks, one of each gauge, and try them out, and give them each an equal amount of time in terms of chance um, uh, trying them out, and then you'll find which one you like. Don't forget, there's there's if if the heavy pick is you like, but you'd like it even heavier and, and more resistance. I think there's even an extra heavy pick. But the main reason why I can't answer your question about flat picks is because I don't play with a flat pick. Nothing wrong with playing a flat, with a flat pick. Believe me, most guitar players, whether they play acoustic or electric, most guitar players use a flat pick. Just so happens that I'm in the maybe 25% that use a thumb pick. But I, when you do use a thumb pick, I suggest you buy a nylon one, not a plastic one. You can tell the difference when you pick them up. You'll see. Sometimes back here, you see this, how it hooks on my finger. Sometimes back here, those, th those plastic picks, they're so thick that they can catch the back can catch on your string and all of a sudden your, your, your thumb is hooked onto your string because there's a big edge back here. Well, Mike, that's the best I can do to answer your question is to go there, go, make an investment in six picks. And, and when you get the one that you like, give the other two away to somebody that uses a lighter, a medium pick or the ones that you're not using. Do we have any other questions to start out before I get into this? Okay, good. Well, the reason why we're here is to, to do the workshop that the workshops that I like to do the best, I had a great time doing the rhythm guitar, blues rhythm guitar workshop, and boy, that time went really fast for, with, for me in the, in the previous um, event that we did the, today. But I do this lead guitar workshop all over the world, and, and it, I've, I've done it as master classes in Europe and South America, and I, I never get tired of sharing this with people. And I'm going to show all of you how to play lead blues in every key before this is over. And it's, it's extremely gratifying to me. And of course, we're going to take um, questions about it once we get into the lessons, and we're going to use rhythm tracks to try out what, what, what we do. So the first thing I need to tell you about playing lead guitar, now try not to focus on, I don't care if you're, you're playing without a pick, if you just play with your thumbs or your finger, like this. Doesn't matter to me how you pick. It's about the sound, okay? I learned from, directly from old blues guys sitting at their feet, famous old blues guys that to you might be just the old photographs and you might not even know their names, but people like Sunhouse, Mance Lipscomb, 
blind Lemon Jefferson was long gone before when I when I came along. But Mississippi John Hurt, Book of White, I knew all these old guys. Lightning Hopkins, Brownie McGee was a neighbor of mine, and I spent a lot of time with him. I could tell you stories about all these guys, and we sat one on one. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because my background in in playing this music is the musical theory all came later. When I sat with these old um, blues men, they would say to me. Hawkeye, put your fingers here and do this. They didn't say play an F sharp and then play a G. They'd say, watch what I do. I'll do it slow and then put your fingers here and do this. And the reason why they did that is because if I, they, they, most of them didn't really know music theory or care about music theory. It's about the sound. So back to the pick thing. Play with a flat pick. Play with a thumb pick. Play with your fingers. It's about making a, a pleasing sound, a sound that's pleasing to you. Don't worry about audiences and what other people think. You want to make the guitar sound like you want it to sound. So we're going to start with the blues scale. And boy, you're going to be surprised how quickly you, you learn this. This is called the five note. It's called the pentatonic blues scale, penta five. Okay, I am going to give you a little bit of theory, but not enough to get in the way of playing. You know, I remember an old jazz musician once was asked, can you read music? And he responded by saying, uh, not enough to hurt my playing. So it's more, it's more about what the sound that you make than necessarily understanding what notes are under your fingers. All right? The first thing we're going to do is talk about the pentatonic scale because that's what we're going to be using in this lesson. And you're going to be playing, you're going to be able to play that scale in about 10 minutes. And, and here, here's how it goes. Theory wise, the pentatonic scale is a five note scale. And, it, and the notes of that scale, regardless of the key, are the one, the tonic note, the four, the five, the flat seven. One, flat three, four, five, and flat seven. I think I skipped the flatted third when I, when I first said it to you. So one more time. In any key, the, the pentatonic blues scale is the tonic note, the one, and then the flatted third, that's between me and fa, right? All right? No, do, re. Yes, yeah, it's, be, it's between me and re. Okay, if you look at it that way. So the one, the flatted third, the four, the five, and the flatted seventh, and then we have the, to the, the tonic up here. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to play it, that scale, one piece at a time. I hope you have your guitars in your lap and you're not just watching and trying to take notes. Remember that you can go to HawkeyeHerman.com and go to my guitar lesson page and there are not only some video, some selected videos from Jam Play, but there are PDF files down at the bottom. And the, and the, the blues box pentatonic scale that I'm showing you in first position first is there and you can print it out. It's a PDF file. It's also another version of it up the neck, which we're going to do. And then there's another version of it down at the bottom of my guitar lessons page that you can print out that is the entire neck of the guitar how to play the pentatonic scale that I'm going to show you the entire neck of the guitar and you can learn you'll be able to learn it really quickly after I give you this initial lesson so let's get going here we go we're going to start on the uh, I hope you have your guitars in your lap and don't depend on writing things down it's more important to me that we're that we're doing this back and forth right here playing the guitar right now so everybody take your third finger third finger of your of your fr uh, fretting hand left or right handed and put it on the third fret of the first string and now play that note okay we're in the key of E and that's the flatted third there's E two is is the F sharp G is the flatted third because the three is that is actually G sharp so we don't want the, the G sharp we don't don't, don't want the fa note we want what's in between so here it is third finger third fret now play open again two notes okay now let's go to the second string and do the same thing I saw somebody using their index finger. Don't use your index finger. The guitar is, is made for the human hands, just like a computer keyboard. The keys are, the keys are arranged. You ever notice that, the, that all the vowels, the things that you need the most, are right under the middle uh, and, and where you need them to be? The guitar is made to be played like this. If you're playing, I'm in the key of E. 
I'm in the key of E, I said blues pentatonic scale in the key of E. This is the tonic note right here, and here's the flatted third that's above it. So we're getting some extra notes. You're, I'm going to give you two and a half, two and a half octaves right here at the nut. And, and you're going to, and, and in the next 10 minutes, you're going to be able to go back and forth across this and play the, the scale. So I hope you have your guitars in your lap and you're not just, you're not, you're not just watching. And what I, the reason why I said that, what I said about the guitar being made for human hands is don't play with the second finger at, at the third fret. Don't play with the first finger at the, sec, at the third fret. The guitar is made, the, the number of your finger should be the number of the fret that you're on. So if you're going to play at the third fret, play with your third finger. Now go to the second string and do the same thing. Okay, so if you want to know what those notes are, I can tell you that they are this. This is a, the flatted third. And this is the tonic, E. Okay? Now behind, going, we're, de, we're descending. Behind that, at the third fret of the, of the second string, that's the flatted seventh. And the open string, B, is the five. So we've already got, actually, half the scale un underneath our fingers. Now, if you don't think that that's enough um, information right there, watch this. And I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a, I want you to do it with me in a minute. I can play a blues solo using those four notes. I don't need the whole neck. I can do this. Okay, it's okay while I'm talking right now if you if you want to try that for yourself because we're going to be able to do it in a little bit with some rhythm tracks. So you got four notes and you can play a solo out of four notes. And just to show you how that can how how heavy that is and how important it, it can be, uh, some of you might know who a guy named Jimmy Page is. Well, one of Jimmy Page's licks that he keeps coming back to over and over again in his the material that he that he um, plays with on. Um, standard electric guitar, whether it's blues or rock and roll, because we wouldn't have any rock and roll if it wasn't for blues. So bl all rock and roll music is based in blues. If blues didn't happen, we wouldn't have rock and roll. It's, it's that simple. If blues didn't happen, we wouldn't have country music. If blues didn't happen, we wouldn't have bluegrass music as well. Bill Monroe played blues first, okay? Jimmy Rogers and Hank Williams were blues musicians first, and that's how they learned. So here you go. I was talking about Jimmy Page. Watch this lick. I'm going to play 3-0. And then I'm going to play the second string. That's a lick. Listen. Okay, so when you hear Jimmy Page, you might hear him going da 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 da. He, what he did was sit on the end of the bed. You don't see him practice. All you see is the result. He practices just like everybody else, you know, puts his pants on one leg at a time, just like the rest of us. And he, what you don't see when you listen to his records or, or anybody's records and you, and you watch or you watch their videos or whatever, is you don't see the time that they spent practicing. So Jimmy Page sat on the end of his bed or in his living room or whatever, and he, and he, he didn't make up this lick. He just practiced it like three, zero, zero. That's three zero on the first string and then zero on the second string. And he sat there and practiced regardless of whether it took him an hour or a week or two months. But he practiced it over and over again. And you didn't see, you don't see that when you, when you listen to his music by Led Zeppelin. What, what you hear is this. He can play it much faster than I because he does use a flat pick, and that's one advantage to a flat pick is that it, it, it's lighter and it can make you it can allow you to play faster. So he played this slow, and because you got to crawl before you walk, and every time he practiced it, he kept picked up the speed a little bit, a little bit until it, I'm going to play it as fast as I can. It's easier for me to do up the neck than it is in first position, because the frets are closer to the, together. But listen, uh, this is the sound. And I'm going to... Now, Jimmy Page can do that at a, at a blinding speed. And many guitar players play at a blinding speed. Okay, so now let's, let's move across. Okay, let's move across the, the neck. We've got three zero, three zero. Now the next st uh, two strings. The third string. Play with your second finger on the second fret. Two zero. Now go to the fourth string and play two zero. 
Now let's play the scale that we've got so far. We've got three zero, three zero, first two strings, two zero, two zero on the second on the on the uh, third and fourth string. Here we go. Okay, now I'm gonna ascend from there, starting with the fourth string. Zero two, zero two, zero three, zero three. And now I'm gonna play a, a bit of a lead, just using the, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight notes to play, to use for lead. Well, listen to this. Okay, let's do it together. I'm gonna to call out the fret numbers. First string, three, zero. Second string, three, zero. Third string, two, zero. Fourth string, two, zero. Are you ready to move on? Fifth string, two, zero. Sixth string, three, zero. And that's the whole scale. I'm gonna say it to you again like this. Three, zero, three, zero, two, zero, two, zero. Two, zero, three, zero. And now I'm gonna play it ascending. You need to do every, practice this scale ascending and descending. You wanna be able to go both directions on the guitar. So let's start on the, on the sixth string and play zero three. Now go to the fifth string and play zero two. Now go to the fourth string and play zero two. Now go to the third string and play zero two. Now go to the second string and play zero three. Now I'll go to the first string and play zero three. Now I'm gonna go back and forth. You know, my wife doesn't play the guitar, but after she watched me do the, a workshop in, in uh, Seattle, Washington about uh, 10 years ago, on the drive home, I live in Oregon, Southern Oregon, on the drive home she turned to me and she said, Michael, she calls me Michael, not Hawkeye. She says, blues people call me Hawkeye. She said, Michael, three zero three zero two zero two zero two zero three zero, and I said, "That's right, you can play lead guitar." And she got that in a forty-five minute workshop at Northwest Folk Life Festival, just watching me. So here I go, descending and ascending. Three zero three zero two zero two zero two zero three zero zero three zero two zero two zero two zero three. And by golly, I can still see that some of you are not using your third and second fingers. You're not using your third finger on the third fret and your second finger on the second fret. I'm watching you. Don't do this. Now, don't do that. That's going to get in. Eventually, when you get this scale under your, under your belt and under your fingers, that you what you think you're doing it well if you use the correct fingers third finger at the third fret second finger at the second fret your the speed and the flow will happen much better because the guitar is made for the human hands and that means that you should play the guitar like this each finger do, goes to the to this fret first finger goes on the first fret second finger goes to the second fret okay i'm going to do that again and i'm going to i'm going to play a lead for you now i'm going to make something up everything i'm doing i'm making up on the fly here we go okay it so happens we've got a backing track here so i'm going to play this backing track in the key of e and i i want you to watch cuz that because it's it's only a minute and 43 seconds long and i might might not play the whole thing but I, I want you to just watch this time because if you try to play along with me right away, that means that you're not watching me, the, the master for today. You're not watching me ex execute this, okay? So this is going to be slow blues in the key of E, and I want you to watch to, for the proof that I'm not going anywhere that I haven't shown you. There's nothing on the back of the guitar that I'm doing. It's all right up here. Three zero three zero two zero two zero two zero three zero. That's the whole thing from high to low. Here we go. Let's see what happens. <laughs>
a try. Here we go. back it up here because I want to I want to talk about it uh, um, a little bit and we'll play along with this backing track again I invite you to play along with me the, what I want to do what I'm going to do this time with this backing track and and the scale is it's okay with me if you play the scale in the order that the notes fall three zero three zero two zero two zero two zero three zero to familiarize yourself with it but once you start getting this scale under your fingers, of course you don't want to keep playing the scale in the order that the notes fall. That gets boring. What you want to do is jump and skip. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll play th the, at the third fret on the first string, and then maybe you'll hammer on on the fourth string, uh, hammer on onto the second fret of the fourth string like this. So it's a good idea to jump around. Watch, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump from the third fret of the first string to the third fret of the second string. Now I'm gonna jump anywhere I feel like. I'm gonna jump from the third fret of the first string and I'm gonna jump to the second fret of the third string. So you jump around, don't, once you get the scale under your belt, you start to experiment with it, right? So I'm going to play the backing track again, and, and you, can, you can ignore what I'm doing, but I, you notice that I purposely put in there. You ready? Here we go. Okay, we're just oh, sorry. We're just about ready to do this in 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 in, uh, in any key, but I want you to be aware of your starting point. Don't always start your solo like this. No, you saw I went to the middle string. Now you know where all these notes are. P picture in your mind dots. 
So it's a dot here at the third fret, and a dot here at the nut, and then a dot here at the third fret at the second string, and a dot here, and a dot here, and a dot here, a dot at the second fret of the third string, and a, and a dot at the second fret of the fourth string, and a dot at the second fret of the th uh, f fifth string, and a dot at the third fret of the uh, sixth string, and there's a dot right here. And so I want you, you should be, it's, it's visual. You should see that. And then you can start a solo, not always the same way. You can start a solo on the D string and go like this. Okay, I think... Uh, you know, I think you guys might be able to play it a little bit faster. Let's try a shuffle rhythm, okay? That was a slow blues. Let's see if you can put this scale under your fingers under, on a, under a shuffle rhythm that's more of a medium tempo. If you want to watch, I'll do it tw at least, I'll do it one time, and then I'm gonna, I invite you to play along with me if you want right now. But now you know what I, where I'm going. I'm not going to play any notes that I haven't shown you. Maybe you don't know how to hammer on. Well, you hammer on. You pull off by playing a note. I'm at the fourth fret. I'm at the fourth string, second fret. Fourth string, second fret. Ha play it open. Now hammer on. Now on an electric guitar, you can go forever because you got an amp. Now I'm going to pull off. Play at the second fret of the fourth string and pull off. Pluck the note and let it go. So you got to hammer on. This is a good lick. Like this. just any of these are good licks. Like this. I played a passing note there. You can play the notes that are in between as long as you don't lean on them, okay? The power tones are 3030202020230. You can play the notes that are in between. You just can't land on them and stay there because they'll be out of tune. Let's do a shuffle. Boy, this is fun for me because I don't play along with backing tracks at home. It's the technology of the people here. Oh, that sounds like slow blues. Wait a minute. Hold it. Let's get back here. It's a shuffle. Here we go. Easy. Okay, now, I purposely did something there that I want you to be aware of. Variety. You can play any of, the, any of these notes in this blues scale, 3030202020030. You can do any of these notes simultaneously. So part of my solo that I was just making up, if you said, Hawk, I do that again, I can't. I was making it up. I was improvising, okay? So I can't repeat what I just did for you because... That's why I love the blues. If I'm feeling happy today, I might play one way. But if I'm feeling sad, I might play another way from moment to moment. You know, I don't even make set lists when I, even when I perform in concert. I know what the first tune's going to be, and I know what the last tune's going to be. But if it's an hour concert, I, if I make a set list, I might not feel the same way when I hit the stage as I did when I made the set list. Whether I made the set list in the afternoon or with, that's blues. Playing in the, in the moment, playing in the feeling. So two notes at a time, okay? Now, you can hit that 
the, the, the three zero, you can hit the third fret of the first string and the third fret of the um, second string simultaneously like this. You could play the third string of the first fret and the second string of the third fret simultaneously by plucking them like this. That's a good sound. It's a Buddy Guy thing. Buddy Guy uses that in the electric guitar a lot. So watch, I'm gonna go across this, the scale, the blues scale, and I'm gonna play the first two strings, like that. Now play them open. Thirds. Now, let's go to the, to the strings number three and four. Second fret on both the third and fourth string. Now let's move down, on, uh, uh, laterally down acro across the, the neck and play strings four and five of the second fret. And we can even play strings five and six at the, sa at the same time. Maybe you wanna play the um, sixth string of the third fret open and, and the fifth string, um, uh, the th excuse me, the third fret of the sixth string is played, I'm playing it at the third fret. And I'm gonna play the fifth string open. I'll reverse it. I'll play at the second fret on the on the uh, fifth string and open on the sixth string. Everything is possible, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do it one more time. Here we go. Here we go. I can play two notes at the same time. Remember when you practice this scale. Remember to also practice it eight. Ascending as well as descending. So the correct way to practice this scale, crawl before you walk, walk before you run, play it slow and make sure that you're playing the, the correct notes first before you pick up speed. Better to be playing it perfectly at a slow tempo than to be playing, trying to play fast and have it sound like crap. Huh? That's that's not music. If you play fast and make bad and make mistakes, what good is that? That's not music. It's better this is music. That's music. Okay. All right. Are, are we are we ready for questions yet or not, or not yet? Okay. Great. I've got the um, tech people in my ear letting me know how the, how that much the time how, how the time's going. Because let me tell you something. When I sit down with my guitar, time stops. So I could be sitting here for four hours, and you'd have to tell me it's four hours. I could be sitting here for 15 minutes. I can barely tell the difference because that's I, I'm passionate. I love this. All right. So now. Hawkeye said he was going to show you how to do this in every key. I am. Right now. Just remember 3 0 3 0 2 0 2 0 2 0 3 0. Go to my website and download that little box. Then go to my website and download the, 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 the uh, blue scale in G. And what you're going to see is I'm going to play in, in the key of G now. Okay, I was in E before, and now I'm going to play in the key of G. All right, here's a B. Here's a, uh, that entire blues scale that I played for you was basically based out of an E chord, right? Now here's a G chord. So that means that this is the nut now. That's a zero. Okay? So what's three? I said three zero. One, two, three. This is the nut. This nut, three zero, is now this is the nut because we're in G. And so now I can play... Got it? Okay, everybody try this with me one time. I only want you to do it one time, ascending and descending. Put your index finger all the way across the neck, like this. Now, your pinky is gonna reach up to the, th to the three frets above, the, of, above your index finger, like this. And back th to the index finger. The, this is great, the index finger is always gonna be playing in the same place. It's taking the place of the nut. Now go to the next string and play three zero. Now go to the next string and play two zero. And go to the next string and play two zero. Go to the next string and play two zero. Now go to the next string and play three zero. Now 
as now ascend. <laughs> Okay, I got the message. Some of your index, you are saying to me, my index finger is getting tired. Oh, look at Hawkeye's finger. Yeah, it's got the impressions of the strings on it. That's why I said to you, the index finger is always going to be at the third fret, isn't it? For the, for in the key of G, because this is the G note. This is the G note, and this is the G note. That's our, our tonic. Okay, so that means that since, since my... Forgive my simplicity, but I'm a simple-minded guy. I'm a guitar player. This is all I've done my whole life, okay? This is what I love. So what I'm going to do is stupidly say, index finger, only play at the third fret, okay? In the key of G. That means that my index finger knows where to go. So instead of putting my index finger across all, all six strings, what I can do is go here and go like this. I'm not holding down strings that I'm not using. You're burning up energy and you're hurting yourself if you if you hold down that, that. This is the way you learn to move it by holding your index finger down. But I know some of you got tired just in the, just going descending and ascending. You, you got tired. Oh, guy, my finger gave out. Yeah, well, your index finger knows that it's only going to play in the key of G at the third fret, so all it has to do is hover over the third fret. And when you reach above it up here... You can drop down. You don't need to use your pinky when you're doing this. This breaks the rules, but it's easier to play. Don't worry about it. Like that. So it's three zero three zero three two zero two zero two zero three zero zero three zero two zero two zero two zero three zero three. Okay, let's move it up another full step. Let's play in the key of A. Where's that going to be? E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So my index finger is going to be playing at the fifth fret. One, two, three. Here's the pentatonic scale, five note scale, blues scale, in the key of A. I'm going to do it again because my my third finger is stronger than my pinky and once you get away from the nut it's okay it's okay to me that you break the rules because some, everyone has different sized hands okay when you're down here it's best to use it one one finger per fret in, in the order that I told you but it's okay to break the rules as you get up the neck because the frets get closer together and for some people the stretch is easy and some for some people the stretch isn't so easy this is not classical music where the rules can't be broken B.B. King broke the rules every day, and so do I. May he rest in peace. Okay, I'm, at the, I'm, in, I'm in A, and I'm going to start out at the fifth fret of the first string. I'm not going to play up above it. I'm just, because I feel like it. I'm going to go like this. Okay, and what about what I said about that Jimmy Page lick. Now, I called it a Jimmy Page lick, but the truth of the matter is, it's one of the oldest blues licks there is. It's just that Jimmy Page came along and played it at a, and played it at a blinding speed. So, here, here's what I'm up to. My index finger knows. Key of A, play at the fifth fret. You don't have to hold on all the strings. All you have to do is hover back there and go... Okay, I think we're ready for a backing track in the key of A, slow blues. Are you guys ready for that? Have you been have you been playing along with me? I hope so. I could keep going all the way up the neck, but we have limited time here, and I want to be able to take some questions in a few minutes. And I got my body clock tells me that that's about three or four minutes away. So here we go, slow blues in the key of A. I'm gonna back up. Here we go. I'll play the notes in order so that you can see the scale. You don't have to change the note on every beat. This is blues.
Listen. having trouble, it might be because you're trying to play too fast. Okay? Now, I said this in the last lesson, and I'm going to say it again. I think we're just about ready for, to take question, questions and answers. Am I, am I not correct? Okay. All right, great. Um, a great jazz player, Howard Roberts, said this, and if you didn't attend the previous event that we did um, uh, earlier today, I'm going to repeat it for you because it's very important to remember this. You know, Hawkeye, if you watch my lessons on jam play, you'll see that just about every other lesson I say, crawl before you walk and walk before you run. You know, you guys don't see me practice this stuff for hours and hours and hours. All you guys do is see the result. And I'm, and I'm no dummy. I've been playing the guitar for 57 years. Well, maybe I'm a dummy for playing the guitar for 57 years, but I've been able to make a living playing the guitar since 1975, exclusive of any other work. And what I want you to know is one of the first things that I learned is this, in my own way, what Howard Roberts, the great late jazz guitar player, said this. He said, the tempo at which to execute something on the guitar is the speed at which you can do it perfectly. Even if that tempo is one notch above a dead stop. In that way, at least you're doing something, playing music, rather than doing nothing. So what that means is, the best way to practice is at a tempo that you can execute it perfectly. And once you can execute it perfectly, that's muscle memory. You're developing muscle memory. Then you can start to speed up, okay? So it's okay to practice like this. Guess what? There's blues songs that go that fast, that slow. It's more fun when it's music than, when, than if I tried to play it fast and did this. This is what you don't want to do. You don't want to go... <clears throat> and make mistakes while you're doing it. Tap your foot. Hang on one note for a while until you're ready to make the change like this. Watch, I'll play it really slowly and it's still musical. Really slowly and I'm going to hang on the notes. In other words, I'm going to play the note over and over again. I'll play the scale in order, but I'll play the notes over and over again. One, two, you know what to do. Okay, so now I just want to reiterate what I said about double stops previously. I can play two notes, any two notes within that scale at the same time. In other words, here's, a, here, here's something that, uh, that's pre-recorded. This is a taste of something that isn't going to be posted for probably many months, okay? You know, I've got in the key of A, I've got this note right here on, on the seventh fret, you know, here. That note right there, that's the tonic note, right? That's the A note. And this is an A note over here too, and this is an A note over here. I'm gonna play a double stop here. I'm gonna play that note, and I'm gonna play, uh, let's see, I think I'm gonna hold down the high A note right here. Now watch. So everything that I do, this top note is with it. 
So I'm playing, yes, I'm holding my index finger down across. I don't have to, but I, I'm doing so, that so that you can see me. So watch, I'm going to pinch. The index finger is covering the fifth fret at the first string, and, and, and my third finger is at the seventh fret of the fourth string, and I'm going to play the, pinch those notes simultaneously. This is, this is like harmony. Now I'm going to go to the third string and play it at the fifth fret while my index finger plays at the fifth fret of the first string. Scale. And again, double stops here. You don't have to play the double stops on, on adjacent strings. They can be anywhere. I could play a, a, a uh, I could play the my tonic note on the fifth string and come over here and play uh, this note in the scale at the same time. Any of those double stops work. Any of those double stops work. But don't please. Don't start messing around with double stops and get ahead of yourself. The first thing that you need to do is get this scale under your belt. Okay. And now. Um, that's enough for double stops right now because I think that we've covered enough material because in the second half here, I want to show you how to be able to play along with all of your records. Yes, you can now do it. You can now play along with, 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 with all of your blues records, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, but for right now, let's take some questions. Anybody have any questions out there? I beg your pardon? Okay. No problem. Here we go. If you got any questions, be sure to come in with them. in between the notes here. It's okay to play the notes that are in between as long as you don't stay there, like go like this. Now that note doesn't work, but, but you can play that note on your way to the correct note or the, the note that's in the scale, like this. Or at the even at the seventh fret. And all of this works down here in, first, in the first position E as well, okay? So here's some more licks. Okay, we got a question coming in. Yeah, Hawkeye, we got a question here from Aaron. Yeah, Aaron. And Aaron asks, why why do you refer to the A minor pentatonic as the key of A? Aaron, the reason why is because blues is minor based music. Okay? And and I don't know how much you know about music theory, but that's a very, it's a good question. It's a very deep question, and I can answer it for, for you, but I don't know if you'll understand the answer. In blues music, some blues songs have a flatted third in it, and that would make it a minor, isn't it? What makes a, a, the difference between an A chord, and a, a C chord, and a C minor is that in a C chord, you got the one, three, five, and in a C minor, you got a one flat, three, five. Well, in blues music, if the, if, if the, thir, the three note, if the three note in the scale is not designated as a major or a minor, then the player can play major or minor. So I, while you, everything that we've played along with that has worked for you at home, 
You've been playing a minor scale while we've been while the accompaniment is 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 playing an A major chord. Okay, that's the 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 essence of blues. The blues is minor based, but you can play blues major or minor. And I'm not here to show you how to play major do re mi fa so la ti do. I'm show you here to show you how to play blues. And the advantage of playing blues music is if the bass player, if you've got a bass player in the band and the bass player is playing the one and major three, then the solo better be in the major three. But if the bass player p plays a bass line that doesn't necessarily have the three in it designated as a major or minor, then the then the lead players can play major or minor. It's going to work as long as everybody lands on the tonic note. So why do I refer to it? Man, I never... I, I've, been, I've been playing blues for 57 years. I've played with some of the great... i played with Charles Brown. I recorded with Charles Brown. He's not only in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he's in the Blues Hall of Fame. He never turned to me unless a song was specifically minor. He never turned to me and said, Hawkeye, this is an, let's do a song in A minor. If it, He'd say, let's do a song in A. And I was free, and he was free, to play either major or minor on the song. Now, if the song is like this... then somebody is going to say in the band, okay, this is an A minor. Okay, but if the song if a song is in the key of A, like I said, this is A, uh, this is A, right? Oh, I'll do it here in E so that you can see better. I'll just sing. Good morning. Good. It's not the best key for me. Good morning, blues. Blues, how do you do? So I just played major chords and played minor over it. Broke all the rules of music. That's why blues is popular. That's why blues became famous. That's why blues was like Beatlemania in the 1920s. Nobody ever heard anything like that. Playing the flatted third over a major chord, okay? So throw that music theory stuff out the window, okay, in this, in this case. All I'm saying here is a great question, but I could show you in notation if you wanted to, and if we had a bass player here, how that works. But take my word for it. If a song is in minor, is a minor with minor chords, definitely the band leader is going to say, okay, this song is in E minor, and then everybody knows to play their solo in E minor. But if the song is like a song like Sweet Home Chicago or, or, or um, Pride and Joy by Stevie Ray Vaughan, nobody's going to say, that's a major song. They're going to say, this is in the key of A, and now Stevie Ray Vaughan plays a minor scale. Yeah. Next question? All right, we got a question from Casey here. Good. Casey, welcome back. Uh, how long did it take you to get down the pentatonic scale? How long did it take you to learn it and get it down? Casey, I got a lot, had a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> Didn't take me long at all because I wanted to learn it, okay? So I would say that what I did is, you know, I, I, and you were here for the last lesson so that you know that even after I've been playing the guitar for 57 years, I have a gut string three quarter size guitar that I can hold in my lap and watch TV and watch the shows that I like. And I finger the guitar while I'm watching TV and I might even try to play along with the commercials and I play along with the background music and movies and stuff like that. And so I'm practicing all the time. And more specifically to your question, if you, you're asking me specifically, how long did it take me? to learn the blues scale. Probably took me uh, a couple hours, okay? To have it memorized? To have it memorized? My wife memorized it and she doesn't even play the guitar. She turned to me and said 3030202020030 after a 45 minute workshop and she doesn't play guitar. So all you have to do is take that formula that I gave you and put it to work. Start slow and build up. How long it took me doesn't matter. Some people learn things in one repetition. Some people need a million repetitions. Doesn't matter the amount of time. If you love music and you love playing the guitar, time is not important. You know, I could sit here for four hours with you guys because I love doing it. And, and, and somebody would have to say, you know, Hawkeye, you just did a four hour lesson. And I'd go, did I? So enjoy it. And don't worry about how much time it takes you. You know, happiness is not some destination up the line and neither is the blues scale. The joy is in the journey because none of us know how long we're going to live. And it's the same way with the guitar. There's no time limitations on how long something takes you. 
you know? Picasso didn't worry about how long it took him to paint a painting. And I don't worry about how long it takes me to learn something. I'm doing it, okay? So do it slow. Do it slow. Take your time and don't worry about how long it takes. But for me, I had a lot of time on my hands. So I'd have to say that from the time that I, I was, became aware of the blues scale, it probably took me a couple hours. And the reason why is because I sat down and did that uh, and nothing else. My finger, I was already having played the guitar for a long time, so my fingers were strong enough. That's another issue, Casey, that I don't know about you. And that's, you know, your fingers might get tired, and so you don't want to stress yourself. So what I say is, relax. You know why I pick up the guitar? Because time stops. So don't put time elements on, on it. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the process. And don't worry about how long it takes you. I've got, you've got the rest of your life. I've got the rest of my life to try and play as fast as Jimmy, as Jimmy Page. And to tell you the truth, I don't, I don't care to. Because for me, it's not about how many notes you play. It's blues music. It's about feeling, playing what I feel. I don't play a note that I don't feel. And that's why when I opened this up, I went like this to you, for you guys. <laughs> I'm talking through the instrument. I know this scale so well that I'm hooked in with my voice the whole time. And when I'm playing, I'm thinking. It's not about speed. It's not about how many notes you play. Listen. That's music, man. Might not sound, it might not be appealing to, to everyone, but I'm having a good time. And that's what this is about. I want you to get the most out of your investment as possible. Don't put your guitar away in the closet in the case. If you've got kids, put, hang it up on the wall where they can't reach it. Don't put it on a stand on the floor, but have it available so that it, when, it, any moment you can take the guitar and pick, pick it up and practice your blues scale, even if it's only for a minute and a half. Every minute that you spend playing the guitar, you, you improve. Anybody got another question? Yeah, we got one more here. Good. Uh, this is from Joni. Uh-huh. And let's uh, see if I can uh, make sense of this. She's asking, uh, is it best to always pluck with the thumb, or can you use a numbering finger technique on the right hand, which I take to mean, uh, you know, is it? do you use a pattern with your fingers uh, as opposed to just kind of winging it? Well... I like these kind of questions, Joni, and I appreciate your asking me that. There are no rules. You know, if I close my, if you close your eyes and listen to me play, what you're listening to is the musical notes that I play, not my technique and what, what fingers I'm using. I don't care what fingers you use. I don't put, care if you play with your thumb. I know what you're asking me for, you know, not just, your question is not just one of what's convenient, but what's right. Well, gosh, you know, I've seen, I've played and been on stage and shared the stage at blues festivals with some of the most, the greatest blues musicians in the world, and you wouldn't believe how unconventional their finger, fingerings were. And somebody, you know, I knew a guy named Gatemouth Brown who was an unbelievable player, and you know that he used to put a capo across the neck, and then he put his fingers behind the capo and played with these two fingers, and he played at a blistering speed. So he didn't even use any of, uh, he only used these two fingers as fretting, and he played with a flat pick, and he had his fingers locked behind the capo here and had to reach up, so unconventional stuff really happens on the guitar. So what I'm saying to you, what I'm trying to do, it, um, Joni, I'm, I'm giving you the ticket to ride. Experiment and find out what works best for you. And don't let anybody say you're not playing, th you're not fingering that right. It's not about that. It's about closing your eyes and going, oh, that's music. It sounds good. The finger that you use to do it with doesn't matter to me. I just wanted you to see down here in first position that it's most convenient to use the third finger at the third fret and the second finger at the second fret. But as we move up the neck, the frets get closer together, and and the fingering is going to become easier. So you might want to change how you finger things. So yeah, you could you could play in patterns, if that's what you meant. Now, Joni, if the, if that wasn't what you meant, send us another me, me, uh, another question. And by the way, folks, when it comes to the questions, if you don't want to give us your name and want to be anonymous, it's okay with me. I just I'm so glad to be here. 
Okay, so hey, Hawk, I, I yeah. think maybe she, she might have been asking about the right hand, like oh, the, the picking. Like oh, the, the picking, picking. The, the picking. Okay, yes. As far as like using it, maybe okay. the pattern. So, Joni, I, you, I understand now. Okay, I'm going to play the scale. I'm going to play this. Albert King was a great blues player, and he was known as the King of Squeeze. And what he used to do is do this on the on the instrument. He didn't go like play. He didn't play blisteringly flat fast. He didn't play. He would do this. No pick at all. I plucked that with my index finger. I've seen people play lead guitar with their pinky, like this. I, you're watching somebody that's been playing their whole life, and I used to play only with a thumb. I tried to play with a flat pick, and then I realized that if I play with a flat pick, I can't use my index finger to do finger picking stuff, which I like to throw in whenever I feel like it. So the reason why I play with a thumb pick is because that way I can grab it like a flat pick, or I can play, with, and I can still play with my fingers. And a lot of times, I didn't ever got the technique down for a flat pick, and it used to fly out of my hands and, and, hit, and fall on the floor. So Joni, I think the answer in, the, in terms of right hand picking is play with your thumb if you play to try that play with a flat pick try that thumb pick try that if you can get a herco thumb pick from elderly instruments online that's the best way to, to do a good way if they don't have them locally you can find them at elderly instruments Her, herco not blue nylon plastic thumb pick they cost about 65 cents and i've even had students in china on from jam play who have mail ordered them from elderly at 65 cents a piece plus plus postage postage is probably more than the picks cost and then as far as your fingers go yes you can click with any finger you want if you wanted to play with your third finger to play the lead and that works for you, that's fine with me because what, what, what we're looking for is results in the music. This is not classical music. This is blues music. You know, I'm going to give a, a slide guitar class, beginning slide guitar event after this one, an hour after this one. And I knew somebody that played slide guitar and they, and they played with uh, index finger and used a pocket knife for the slide. And the music sounded great. And he didn't ask permission to do that of anybody. And he made a lot, and, he, and that person was very good. We got another question? Yeah, kind of piggybacking on yeah. uh, this concept here. Uh, Paul has a question. Uh, when, uh, when just learning to play the guitar, how important is learning music theory? And I think that kind of ties into what you're talking about here. It does. Paula, all uh, blues comes from African American culture. And I, and I sat at the feet of, of, a lot of people that you probably don't know their names, but they're considered iconic blues, old blues guys who invented this music, okay? And none of them ever said to me, play the flatted third, now play the flatted seventh, and now play the one. All of them said to me, put your fingers here and do this. And I would copy them. And then I went and learned the music theory to to go with it so that I could communicate with people like you, everyone else, right? Because there are people that are theory-oriented and the there, are, there are people that aren't theory-oriented. So when your question about how important is it, I think you should know what you're doing. But it shouldn't stand in the way of your playing. As a matter of fact, there was a famous jazz musician, I won't say his name, but when he, when he was asked if he could read music, he said, not well enough to get in the way of my playing. So learn the techniques that I teach you and don't worry about the theory behind it. Just take my word for it. I got a great question online through um, the Jam Play website from what, somebody who was taking my lesson and they, I said, this is a D7 chord moved up the neck. And the question was, uh, Hawkeye, there's no tonic note in that. So how could it be a D chord? And I responded, well, the three and the five and the flatted seven are in there and the, and the tonic note is suggested. And he didn't really understand my, my answer and so he responded by saying, okay, I don't quite get it, but I'll take your word for it. And that's what I want is, it, from you guys, is take my word for it, this works. The theory, the theory will come later. You know, when I sat down with Lightning Hopkins and all these famous blues guys, none of them, none of them said to me, this scale consists of the tonic, the flatted third, the four, the five, and the flatted seventh. No one ever said that to me. I, I taught myself that later on after I learned where my fingers were, okay, so that I can communicate with other people. 
But I was taught to play, put your fingers here and do this. So I guess the, my answer to your question is, I don't think the music, th you don't need music theory to play the instrument. Okay? But you should need, have music theory to understand the logic of the instrument, okay? And, and eventually, I, I'm saying, I want you to learn this scale, and the, and the logic of how chords are constructed and how scales are played and made can come later to fill in your knowledge. But for right now, gosh, music theory can stand in the way of getting, getting mileage and having fun out of your guitar. Your guitar is an investment. I want you to get the most out of your investment as possible. So, Joni... That's a great question, and I'm glad you asked it, and I wish I could answer it more specifically, but I'm saying to you, play 3030202020030, know that it's the flatted third one, the, you're going flat three, one, da, flatted seven, five, four, flatted third one, you should know what the names of those notes are eventually, but you don't need to know it now, because listen, I, I, start, I learned that box that I just showed you, that blue scale across two and a half octaves. A long time before I learned what the notes were and how, what a pentatonic scale actually is. Got another question? Yeah, we got another one from Aaron. Okay, Aaron. And this is a really great question. Uh, he says he once heard that blues is easy to play but hard to feel. And he was wondering if you could comment on that statement. Yeah, that's the truth. My way of saying that is it's not about the number of notes that you play. It's about feeling. So when you practice the blues scale, boy, it really bums me out when people say, oh, I don't sing. Not everybody has to be a singer, but you should be singing in your head. And Aaron, the answer, to, my best answer that I can give you is that when you practice this scale, you, should be, you shouldn't just be watching yourself do it. You should be involved in it. It's a conversation that you're having. So, Aaron, when I practice anything, I, I sing it in my head while I'm doing it. Like this. You don't have to be a singer to do that. And gosh, you guys can tell when I'm connected to my instrument and when I'm not. When I'm watching myself play, there's no feeling involved. But when I'm, when I'm connected to my instrument, you know, the, what was the first thing that you saw me do in the introduction here? I did this. I didn't watch myself do that. My brain was telling my fingers to do that just like I'm talking to you now. And he said, if somebody said, Hawkeye, would you do that again? Guess what? <laughs> I can't. I was making it up. It was all feeling. So when you practice this scale, don't watch yourself do it unless you're making a mistake and then you got to correct the mistake. But say to yourself, and you don't have to be a singer, go in your brain. I've played anywhere from in front, in front of 100 people to 25,000 people. And even in front of 25,000 people, I know, I can tell, especially in blues crowds, the audience can tell when you're playing with feeling and when you're just watching yourself do it. Okay? It's, think of it as like an actor. Some actors just say the words. But some actors can really put themselves into those words. That's what the blues is about. Okay? I hope that answers your question, Aaron. It's all about feeling. That's why it's not about the number of notes. I can get just... Well, can, listen to the feeling I can get up with this, uh, with this just because you guys know that I'm connected. Listen. thinking to myself, I'm having a conversation here. It's all real. You might not necessarily like the way it sounds, but I'm feeling it the whole time. And if I ever catch myself watching myself play, it's like, bam, I smack myself across the head. I'm not having a, a I'm not living in the music. 
This is an art form that I'm living in. Okay? This isn't about a lot of technique that, that needs to be fast, speed, or blinding. This is about feeling. Blues is about feeling. It's, and if you looked at the, um, the uh, description of this class, it sa I think I said something like, Blues music, Aaron, is not based in the number of notes you play. It's based in feeling. Okay? So a lot of notes don't mean anything to me if there's no feeling behind it. It's just a lot of technique that's not talking to me. It's like somebody giving a speech and putting no feeling into it. I want to go to sleep. A lot of technique, but no feeling. Got any other questions? Yeah, we have one from Alexa. Okay. Um, she's wanting to know, when you're talking about the flatted third and seventh, does that mean the third note in the scale or the seventh note in the scale? Yes. Another way to look at it is this, Alexa, is, is I use my fingers because I'm such an elemental guy. Do, re, me. Me is the three, right? One, two, three. Do, re, me. The flatted third is right here, in between. It's in between. Do, re, me. And here's the flatted third in between. And the flatted seventh, watch. Do, re, me, fa, so, la, ti. The flatted seventh is in here, right in here. Okay, so in, it, it, on, on the scale here, watch, I'll, I'll go. Do, re, me, fa, so, la, there's the, there's the there's the the normal T note and the and in blues music it's this note. So Alexa, you're right. That's what it, we're referring to. The flatted third means that you're taking do re mi. It's the mi note and it's flatted, okay? And the T note and it's flatted. So or somebody could say it's do the three, flatted three, is the three, the three note is flatted and the seventh note is flatted. And those are the only five notes that we need. One, flat three, four, five, flat seven, and one. I don't have time in this lesson, but if I did have time in this lesson, I could show you how to use this five note blues scale to play major over any song just by moving it to the relative sixth position, but I, I don't want to get into that with you now. I do know music theory. You know, I teach everywhere uh, everywhere from the elementary the, to the college level, and I'm brought in as a guest speaker and, and, and um, in cross-curriculum situations as well. I've been in more than 500 schools in 30 states and in 10 foreign nations for 37 years to a half a million people, you know, half a million students. And, uh, and I uh, sometimes I'm asked to explain things in musical theory, and sometimes they don't care about musical theory at all. It's a matter of just get, just show me how to do something. And the reason why I'm here is I want you to get some of you. Some of you are beginning players, and you've got Taylor guitars, and you've got Martin guitars, and you've got Colin guitars, and those cost a lot of money, and you can't do anything with it with the instrument. And this instrument should be your best friend. It should be the person, the thing that you go to. It's waiting for you all the time. Your guitar is waiting for you all the time. What better friend could you have? Okay. Okay. Let's do one more question, and, and we're gonna. Is this? Is it? Are we wrapping it up now? Okay, boy, this is that's amazing to me. Okay, okay, Hawkeye, we got um, a question from Javier, mm -hmm. and he asks, "What do you think about using jazz chords and scales in blues music?" Um, Javier, that's another lesson because when I'm playing I'm playing mostly major chords here for you, but in truth, watch this. I'm playing ninth chords. You can't play urban blues without using jazz chords, ninth and the and eleventh chords. Okay, if you always play, if you're gonna sing Stormy Monday or any blues song, and you're gonna use major chords, it's gonna sound corny and square because urban blues is more sophisticated. And I, that's another lesson. But what I want you to know, Javier, is that all urban blues depends on primarily seventh, ninth, and eleventh chords, not an A chord, but an A ninth chord or an A seventh chord or an A 11th chord. And as far as jazz solos go, well, if you play too many notes and you play, play too chromatically, 
playing all the frets in blues music, all of a sudden there's more technique than there is feeling. But as far as chords go, hey man, I play I play I play jazz chords constantly. I'm a, I I I had a jazz gig in San Francisco for seven years while I was playing country music, and I had a country band at the same time. So as a guitar player, what I knew was play major chords. I mean, I knew how to play for a long time. Play major chords when you play country music. And when you play blues music, play jazz chords like this. And when you play jazz, you got to play ninths and even more ninths and elevenths and, and uh, G minor uh, flat five chords, all kinds of chords. I know all of that stuff. But when you when you play blues, if you want it to sound like blues, you got to limit your chromaticism in in the lead and not necessarily play jazz scales. But it's okay to play a lot of seventh chords, dominant seventh chords, ninths and elevenths. Okay, Javier, I hope that answers your question. Go listen to B.B. King, and you're going to hear the, the band and, and B.B. He doesn't play, B.B. doesn't play any chords at all. He, he, he said, may you rest in peace. He uses the guitar in response to his voice. He plays no chords. Listen to Buddy Guy, listen to Stevie Ray Vaughan, listen to Jimmy Page, and you're going to hear, the, hear jazz chords. That's what makes urban blues different from country blues. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I can't, I, there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to cover with in this, like, but what I want you to know is I've had a great time. And by moving up the neck, you should be able to find the key that anybody is in on the guitar that's a blues player. And there's the, if it's, if you find it here, you say to yourself that they're in the key of D and now play the scale there. I want to remind you to go to my website, HawkeyeHerman.com. Go to the guitar page. Go, go to my go to the videos on YouTube and try to play along with me. Everything that I show you, I use live in con in concert. So go there and play along with me. Use use me as a metronome and also try to steal my licks. Okay. Go to use my website for that purpose and go to the guitar lessons page and download that stuff. And don't forget. Those of you that have been auditing this that are not subscribers, that through this weekend, if you use the code word Hawkeye, you get a 25% discount on a, your subscription. I can't thank Jam Play enough for giving me this opportunity because I tour so much that I don't have the time to do regular lessons during the week or something like that, saying every, thir every other Thursday. I travel too much to do that. So this has been a great opportunity for me, and I can't thank Jam Play enough for the six years, seven years, years that I've been with him. And more than that, I can't thank you guys enough for your questions and your comments and your encouragement and your focus and your attention and for, and for, and for your love of the music. My goal is to pass the torch on to you and for you, for you, to get some value out of that instrument that you bought. I don't care if it's a $10 Stella guitar or something that you bought at, at Cheapo at, at, um, at, at some pawn shop, or if it's a fancy old Gibson. I want you to get some mileage out of it. I've had a great time here. I hope you guys too. And all I can say is... So long to you. I've had a real good time Thanks to Jam Play I've had a real good time I hope to see you again Cause this time has been mighty fine